Welcome to Adventures in Grace. This is Jim Hockaday looking forward to another video. Hey, we're still going to talk about progress. The Apostle Paul is going to help us and we're going to jump right back in. We won't take much time because we want to jump right back into some of the things he was saying in Ephesians 4 to Ephesians 6, where Paul is just helping us to see that we can make the choices to, to acquire an allegiance toward making uh, the spirit connection with God our priority. And that's exactly on Adventures in Grace what we're doing. We're opening up our hearts and minds to the idea that God can be more real. And for God to be more real, you're going to have to make choices each day that actually looks like you're, you're talking with and, and experiencing him by faith. And that whole realm will open up and you'll realize that it is real and it is tangible. We have a wonderful testimony from some friends of ours that I'll give you. It says, Greetings, Brother Jim. The week prior to Father's Day, our church conducted VBS. My husband and I both teach, and as you may recall, we live in another city, so rather than travel back and forth, we booked a hotel and stayed for the entire week. We were greatly blessed to have our five-year-old grandson spend time with us. We returned home on Saturday with the plan to take him shopping for Father's Day gift for his dad. As you might expect, we were tired. Also, we did not have a lot of time to shop because my grandson and I needed to prepare to fly out early for Father's Day. His dad wanted a chain link bracelet. Although I wasn't functioning with a specific budget, I also did not want to spend a huge amount, but basically had the attitude that irrespective of that, he was going to bless his dad with that bracelet. The department store we shopped at had a wonderful sale, 75% off jewelry. Instead of one a guy bracelet, I bought two, one for my grandson to give to his dad and one for my husband. Both guys were delighted with their gifts and I am delighted with the 75% grace gift sale. What a God. And she went on to say thank you for Adventures in Grace. The, this is just another wonderful testimony where you can identify that God is around us at all time, wanting to do amazing and wonderful things. Listen, the grace of God is everywhere. I remember back in Tulsa, I was helping Aaron, you know, with some of the chores in the house. And, and I prefer vacuuming or cleaning the floor type of a thing. You know, she does dusting detail, but I like the bigger things. So I'm vacuuming the floor and I needed some more light. So the curtain was there and I pushed the curtain back. And as I did, the sun was shining in perfectly and all the particles in the air were now visible. And I wanted to put a mask on as I'm thinking, oh my goodness, look at how many particles I'm breathing right now. Have you ever had that experience? Well, that's the dispensation. Welcome to grace. Grace is everywhere and you're breathing it. It's just time to acknowledge it. And the more you see simple things like our wonderful testimony, you acknowledge that as God's grace and he opens your eyes to see more of his grace because there's so much you cannot acknowledge all of it within the course of a day in the course of your life. This is what we're doing on Adventures in Grace. Open your mind so that faith becomes normal and testimonies abound. Over there in Matthew chapter 11, 27 to 30, it says, Now Jesus resumed talking, but now tenderly. The Father has given me all these things to do and say. This is a unique father and son operation coming out of father and son intimacies and knowledge. No one knows the son the way the father does, nor the father the way the son does. But I'm not keeping it to myself. I'm ready to go over it line by line with anyone willing to listen. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. Can you hear Jesus? Come on, come on. We're going to have a blast. Let go of all that baggage. Take your backpack off. You won't need it where we're going. <clears throat> There's plenty of provision. Just go lighthearted. Praise the Lord. Come with me. Walk with me. Work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting upon you. Keep company with me and you'll learn how to live freely and lightly. That's what we all desire. Well, Paul desires that too, and as much as this is a long passage, just listen to what he's trying to say. He's trying to open up our heart and our mind to another kind of life that has experiences with Christ. And so it says, 
in verse 17 of Ephesians 4. And so I insist God backs me up on this, that there be no going along with the crowd, the empty-headed, mindless crowd. They've refused for so long to deal with what uh, that God has with God that they have lost touch not only with God but with reality itself. They can't think straight anymore, feeling no pain. They let themselves go in sexual obsession, addicted to every sort of perversion. Listen, folks. If you find yourself in a place of numbness because of connecting to the world, by all means lift up your heads, O ye gates. For the king of glory shall come in. In other words, grace is everywhere. Disconnect with that. Acknowledge it. Repent. Turn and face the Lord. And instantly grace will help you to make choices that will connect with God. And you can very quickly go very far and distance yourself from what you were just connected to that seemed impossible to get free from. Verse 20, but that's no life from you. You learned Christ. My assumption is that you have paid careful attention to him, been well instructed in the truth precisely as we have it in Jesus. Since then, we do not have the excuse of ignorance. Everything, and I do mean everything, connected with that old way of life has to go. It's rotten through and through. Get rid of it and then take on an entirely new way of life, a God-fashioned life, a life renewed from the inside, working itself into your conduct as God accurately reproduces his character in you. And someone could say, well, that sounds like works, Brother Jim. I thought we were living in grace. Well, you are. You're surrounded by ability that is beyond anything that you could fail or become connected to negatively. But you make choices and your choices connect with the grace. Choices are something that every human being is responsible for. Most choices we make in the course of the day fall in the category of patterns, habits, and routines, and you don't really even know consciously that you're making the choice. So begin consciously, step by step, to make one little choice after another after another, and the bars of your reception to God will become real, and he will become more real than the things that you've been connected to negatively, and you can come right out of that. Paul's not giving you at all a works program according to the law. He's presenting unto you the opportunity to make choices to connect to the Spirit. Under the old covenant, they couldn't connect to the Spirit. All their works were self-righteousness. Under the wonderful covenant of Christ, all our righteousness is God's in Christ. And our choice to receive it and walk in it is the reason why you experience it. Make the difference and see how it's different from old covenant to new. I say all that real strong because there's people that will fight me on that. And I'm not going to fight with you. You're just flat wrong. God's grace is abundant. Now choose to open your heart and your mind to experience him everywhere you go. And notice I use the word choose because you can choose or you can choose not to. As for me and my house, I want to choose the Lord. How about you? Let's have experiences this summer like we've never had before. What this adds up to, then, is this. No more lies, no more pretense. Tell your neighbor the truth. In other words, when you start choosing God, you won't go over there. This isn't about stop lying, stop all that stuff. No, it's not condemnation, guilt, shame. This is telling you as you begin to make choices, because now you're free to do so under grace. The, the way of life you used to live were these things that weren't good, were a part of your life, they'll stop being a part of your life. In Christ's body, we're all connected to each other. After all, when you lie to others, you end up lying to yourself. Go ahead, be angry. You do well to be angry, but don't use your anger as fuel for revenge. And don't stay angry. Don't go to bed angry. Don't give the devil that kind of foothold in your life. Did you used to make ends meet by stealing? Well, no more. Get an honest job so that you can help others who can't work. Again, I just want to keep on telling you, this is not works. Paul's showing you this other life will literally trap you, hold you in bondage to yourself. So choose grace that's all around you. Choose to connect with God. And these things will grow strangely dim. Oh, I hear a song coming. In the light of his glory and grace. Come on, that's your turn your eyes upon Jesus. 
That's not works. That's giving your heart to the Lord. And as you do, he becomes real. And the realness of these other things becomes less. That's what makes change. It's not about fortifying yourself with yourself. It's about reestablishing a connection with God. He said right here, Watch the way you talk. Let nothing foul, dirty come out of your mouth. Say only what helps, each word a gift. Don't grieve God. Don't break his heart. His Holy Spirit moving and breathing in you is the most intimate part of your life. There you go. That's what grace is all about. Making you fit for himself. Don't take such a gift for granted. Make a clean break with all cutting, backbiting, profane talk. Be gentle with one another. Sensitive. Forgive one another as quickly and thoroughly as God in Christ forgives you. Why would you want to forgive? Well, it's not because God won't forgive you. That's old covenant. That's what Jesus talked about, the old covenant. If you don't forgive, God won't forgive you. The new covenant, he's already forgiven you. But why would you want to forgive others? So that your heart is free from an encumbrance. And that encumbrance will make you act differently. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. You have a rift with somebody and you see them and you immediately go into a store so that you don't have to talk to them. Why are you acting like that? Because there's shame, there's guilt, there's inferiority. Do you have to have that? No, God's greater than your heart. He's not bringing the shame. You are. So go ahead and get rid of that by honoring the law of love. Yes, there is a law. And the law is the love of God has been shed abroad in your heart. Amen. Follow that. Watch what God does, and then you do it, like children who learn proper behavior from their parents. Mostly what God does is love you. Keep company with him and learn a life of love. Well, what is that talking about? Making simple choices on your bars to your phone to have reception to God. Observe how Christ loved us. His love was not cautious, but extravagant. He didn't love in order to get something from us, but to give everything of himself to us. Love like that. Yes, amen. As you begin to give to others, it's given back to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together. And he goes on to say, don't allow love to turn into lust, setting off a downhill slide into sexual promiscuity, filthy practices, or bullying greed. Although some tongues just love the taste of gossip, gossip Christians have better use for language than that. Don't talk dirty or silly. That kind of talk doesn't fit our style. Thanksgiving is our dialect. You can be sure that using people or religion or things just for what you can get out of them, the usual variations on idolatry, will get you nowhere and certainly nowhere near the kingdom of Christ, the kingdom of God. What is he saying? The idolatry of putting other things first will distance you from the tangibility of what God wants to do in your life right here and right now. That's what he's saying. He's warning us, at the same time encouraging us. Live from the inside. Connect with God. He's right there. This is my grandson's crab, and it just went off right in the middle of my video. I don't know that we can control him. So anyhow, pardon him. All right, here we go. Don't let yourself be taken by religious smooth talk. God gets furious with people who are full of religious sales talk but want nothing to do with himself. Don't even hang around people like that. What's he trying to say? He's just simply trying to say, be uh, consistent with yourself. Don't become something else and talk like something you aren't. Be consistent to your real self, the spiritual man that's connected with God. And he goes on, you groped, your way through that murk once, but no longer. You're out in the open now. The bright light of Christ makes your way plain. Yes, so no more stumbling around. Get on with it. The good, the right, the true. There are actions appropriate for daylight hours. Figure out what will please Christ and then do it. Don't waste your time on useless work, mere busy work. The barren pursuits of darkness. Expose these things for the sham they are. It's a scandal when people waste their lives on things they must do in the darkness where no one will see. Rip the cover off those frauds and see how attractive they look in the light of Christ. Wake up from your sleep. Climb out of your coffins. Christ will show you the light. So watch your step. Use your head. Make the most of every chance you get. These are desperate times. Don't live carelessly, unthinkingly. Make sure you understand what the master wants. 
Don't drink too much wine. That cheapens your life. Drink the Spirit of God, huge draughts of Him. Sing hymns instead of drinking songs. Sing songs from your heart to Christ. Sing praises over everything. Any excuse for a song to God the Father in the name of our Master Jesus Christ. What's he talking about? Make connections constantly with God and you will swing to the side of tangibility where God is real to you. Out of respect for Christ, be courteously reverent to one another. Wives, understand and support your husbands in ways that shows your support for Christ. The husband provides leadership for his wife the way Christ does to the church. Not by domineering, but by cherishing. So just as the church submits to Christ and he exercises such leadership, wives should likewise submit to their husbands. Husbands, go all out in love for your wives, exactly as Christ did for the church. A love marked by giving, not getting. Christ's love makes the church whole. His words invoke her beauty. Everything he does and says is designed to bring the best out of her, dressing her in dazzling white silk, radiant with holiness. And that is how husbands ought to love their wives. They're really doing themselves a favor since they're already one in marriage. No one abuses his own body, does he? No, he feeds and pampers it. That's how Christ treats us, the church, since we are part of his body. And this is why a man leaves father and mother and cherishes his wife. No longer two, they become one flesh. This is a huge mystery, and I don't pretend to understand it all. But as clearest to me is the way Christ treats the church. And this provides a good picture of how each husband is to treat his wife, loving himself and loving her, and how each wife is to honor her husband. Notice how we have expectations for one another, and therefore we respond certain ways that bring out the very best. Do you have expectations for the grace of God? That you're breathing in the air every second of the day. Do you have expectations that God is actually wanting to bless you and love you and build you up? Then listen and look and see and find and hear what he's saying. Let your tangibility and your connections be real. This is what Paul's endeavoring to say. Don't take the negative slant. There he goes again. I just have to try to do everything so perfect. No, he's just trying to tell you, open up your eyes and look. <clears throat> he goes on to say in verse 6, Children, do what your parents tell you. This is only right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment that has a promise attached to it. Namely, you will live well and have a long life. Fathers, don't exasperate your children by coming down hard on them. Take them by the hand and lead them in the way of the master. Servants, respectfully obey your earthly masters, but always with an eye to obeying the real master, Christ. Can you not see that he's trying to present to you another whole option of choices that you can make that will benefit you and everyone around you? Servants, respectfully obey your earthly masters, but always with an eye to obeying the real master Christ. Don't just do what you have to do to get by, but work heartily as Christ's servants doing what God wants you to do and work with a smile on your face, always keeping in mind that no matter what happens to be, to give, uh, be giving the orders or who gives the orders, you're really serving God. Good work will get you pay from the master, regardless of whether you're a slave or free. Masters, it's the same with you. No abuse, please. No threats. You and your servants are both under the same master in heaven. He makes no distinction between you and them. A fight to the finish. And that about wraps it up. God is strong and he wants you strong. So take everything the master has set out for you. Well-made weapons of the best materials and put them to use so you will be able to stand up to everything the devil throws your way. This is no after-athletic contest that we'll walk away from and forget about in a couple hours. This is for keeps. A life or death fight to the finish against the devil and his angels. I wrote this down. In other words, Paul tries to help each church protect their heart so that our relationship and the life that we live connected to Jesus will grow and flourish. Mm, we're going to come right back there. This is a little bit long. I know it's easier to watch when someone's giving you eye contact than I was reading the whole time. But thank you for enduring this, and yet thank you for loving this. I'm sure you do, because I love it as well. It's helping us. You feel like you just took a step up on the podium where you got the gold medal right now. And you feel like you're bigger than life. Come on, everybody. Let Jesus be real to you right now. I encourage you this next week. Let the healing mercies of Jesus just flow through your body as you connect with him. No, not as you say a thousand times, I believe I receive, I believe I receive. Yet there's nothing wrong with saying things out of your mouth to encourage your own soul. But just connect with him and then know that the life of Christ is flowing through you in ways 
You couldn't have even have gotten him to do it with all the good works in the whole world. Just enjoy it. We'll see you next time on Adventures in Grace. Make sure you go to our email, jhmi at jimhockaday.com.